okay guys so today in this session also we are going to continue the basic setting itself uh, this is the third class for basic setting so now yesterday uh, we covered till tolerance group so till tolerance group or tolerance limits I covered yesterday now today we are going to start from document types onwards so <clears throat> what is this document type what is the use of document type that I'll explain okay no so guys document type determines the types of transaction that is whether it is invoice credit memo payment it controls the document number ranges and the field status as well okay so uh, first of all I'll explain uh, this document type and I'll show you guys practically how it controls this field status and all everything so now let's suppose if we talk about a types of transactions if we talk about types of transactions now types of transactions means say for example we are having a vendor called XYZ limited let's suppose we are having a vendor called XYZ limited <coughs> so if you see the vendor report okay how to see the vendor report that is later part today I'm just trying to make you guys document it. so if you see the vendor report then what will happen here in that vendor report several transactions will be there okay like some 300 400 700 250 like that several reports several transactions will be there okay generally it will be like this okay so now if you see this 300 400 700 250 like that now what will happen if you see the total balance if you see the total balance it will be like uh, if you see the total balance here it will be like this total balance is 1150 okay so now how the total balance is 1150 or else how the total balance will be 1150 isn't it so now here total balance is 1150 because whenever when you go into detail this 300 this 300 transaction is there that is invoice okay this 400 also invoice okay let's suppose this 300 also invoice but this 250 is credit memo this 250 is credit memo credit memo means okay guys here in SAP we are not going to say debit memo and credit memo we say it's like credit memo only so what how we say credit memo in the sense like vendor credit memo and customer credit memo like that people are saying okay anyway so credit memo means we have bought 
a goods worth of 300 rupees so we posted invoice we have bought a goods worth of 400 rupees we posted an invoice worth of 400 we bought a goods worth of 700 rupees we bought uh, we posted this transaction also and we bought goods worth of 250 rupees sorry and we returned goods worth of 250 rupees so we have posted credit memo now here we are not going to discuss like against which uh, invoice we have returned this okay that will be once we start practical uh, session in account payable there we'll discuss this <coughs> now but the thing is like here simply i have specified this is invoice this is invoice this is you know credit memo or else let's suppose this is say for example this could be advance payment this could be advance payment also so if it is this is the advance payment then what will happen then it will be 850 isn't it so how we will come to know which one is payment which one is invoice which one is credit memo because these kind of things will not be there okay only amounts will be there document number will be there if you check the vendor report and all and uh, reference number will be there document date posting date lots of things will be there but these kind of things not will be there which is going to tell you that which one is payment which one is invoice which one is credit memo so instead of these information what sap has given us sap has given us sap is saying that you post every transaction against a document type whenever we post any invoices we have to post an invoice vendor invoice against a document type kr kr kz payment will be posted against kz whether it is advanced or whatever it is and credit memo will be let's suppose kz okay so it's not like that these are the standard document type you have to post the same you have to follow the same thing even we can create our own document type also okay so this is the standard document type which i am talking about because i have to make you guys understand about the concept of document type okay once you understood you can do any kind of experiment so now here what will happen these things are gone these things are not there okay so here instead of these details we are having document types okay so by looking into this document types we know that kz okay you guys don't know because it's first time for you but since like whoever has you know whoever is working as a consultant or whoever is has already worked as an end user these people know that what is this document type so whenever we post any transaction whenever you post any transaction these all transaction will be posted against a different different document types so this is how we are going to segregate the types of transactions if you check the vendor report there are several types of transactions how you will come to know that which amount this this transaction belongs to what is it, whether it is payment or or invoices or credit memo so here we can check the document type and document type is going to explain you that yes this is a payment this is invoice this is invoice this is a credit memo okay so the first thing which i said here that document type determines the types of transaction okay it means which kind of transaction is this whatever transaction we have posted whether it is invoice credit memo or payment document type is going to explain this details now it controls the document number ranges okay so how it controls document number ranges i'll let you know let me log in first in sap
okay now so guys i have uh, logged in here now i'll show you now i'll show you about uh, this document type how to create document type so we are going to use we are going to use a transaction code oba7 press enter give transaction code oba7 so here we are having these are the list of document types now so if you see here several document types are created already okay so i'll tell you here one thing all uh, the document types whatever document types are there all document types are not being used by finance people in the sense finance module in sap several modules are there is in an in, in each and every module there will be certain transactions which is getting posted for every module if you talk about st mm hr pp qm pm cs pm lots of modules are there so in every module certain transactions will be there and for every transactions there will be a different different transaction type okay so now here i'll just give a document type let's suppose we post a jb general voucher general voucher means whenever we are having a gl to gl transaction like one gl is getting debited other gl is getting credited so that jb we are going to post against a document type sa so how you are going to search sa either you have to scroll it down or else click on position and type sa document type press enter so double click on this sa document type now so here there are lots of things here in document types first of all in general as i said like with this document type you can identify whether it is for vendor or customer or uh, you know gl and apart from this in vendor also whether it is a credit memo whether it is for invoice whether it is for payments and all now the second thing as i explained here that document type also control the number ranges okay so how this document type controls the number range so you double click on any document type i double click on sa document type why because when i taught you guys gl settings and after that when i post a first document in the sense when we post the first transaction that we are going to post against this document type itself so here in this document type what is happening here we have given a number in 0 1 now what is this 01 and what is uh, what is the impact okay i'll tell you guys whenever whenever you post a transaction whenever you post a transaction let's suppose gl number a is getting debited and gl b is getting credited this is how the posting will happen one gl will be debited one another gl will be credited okay uh, with certain amount 100 200 300 whatever it is so here if you post these kind of transaction what will happen the end result will be system is going to generate a transaction number that is let's suppose the transaction number is 1000 this is called document number why it is called document number as i explained yesterday whatever transaction you post in sap in sap we are going to say it as a document one transaction equals to one document in the sense i'll just tell you guys here transaction equals to okay so in normal in normal conversation whenever you post any transaction or whenever you record any transaction you are going to say that okay we have posted one transaction or we have recorded one transactions the same transaction in sap it is called document okay 
so here we have posted one document in the sense we have posted one transaction means we have posted one document and once you post in the sense once you enter all the details and once you click on save button somewhere let's suppose here in excel sheet save button is there likewise in sap also we are having save button once you click on save save is nothing but post once you click on save means save is nothing but post once you click on post then what will happen this transaction will be posted okay it means this transaction got saved permanently in sap okay now so once this transaction uh, is getting saved or posted then what is happening system is going to generate a number that is called transaction number okay so as i said in sap language this transaction whatever we have posted that is called document so whatever number generated that will be called document number so now here how this document number is going to derive how this document number is going to appear how this document number is given by sap the moment you post a document the moment you post a transaction immediately system is going to generate a document number so how it is going to be derived so first of all what we have to do this document number it is it's being derived by sap automatically but we have to create a number range first okay we have to create a number range first okay this number range also i have to explain so now i'll show you guys how to create a number range first of all i'll show you guys how to create a number range in the sense whenever you post a document whenever you post a transaction we are going to decide that what should be the number series okay for gl let's suppose it is okay first of all let me show you guys how to create this document number range transaction code is fbn1 fbn1 and give your company code tm10 and click on this interval see we are having three interval this is for display this is for creating and this is for change in our status what is this in our status and other things i'll explain once again that that will be explained later you click on change interval always click on change interval so here i am going to give a number range let's suppose 02 anything you can give 01 02 03 04 whatever you want you can give i am just for example i am saying or else just you do one thing give 01 itself and then give your year 2017 okay and here from number i am just going to give small number range and two number 199 it means what we are saying that whenever and save it press enter so now we have created a number range okay what is happening here i have given a very small series here i have given a very small range but if you go in real time what will be happening it's a very big series it will be like it will be like this okay it will be like this and here it will be like let's suppose one it will be like this okay this much series will be there okay so in real time what is happening this much document is impossible to be posted okay so what will happen this is not going to be consumed okay but here we are going to create, we here we are going to give a small number range so that it will be easy for you guys so we have given thousand to thousand triple nine okay this is the number range which we have given and i have saved okay now this thousand to thousand triple nine and what is this number range like this code is zero one against zero one we have given this range thousand to thousand triple nine once we created this number range then what next we are going to do we are going to link this number range against document type here i have to let's suppose i have given 01 and then i am going to save it okay 
so what is happening as i said whenever you post any transaction whenever you post any transaction this transaction is getting posted against a document type this transaction will be posted against a document type whether it is kz kr kz whatever is there but this transactions will be or sa these all transactions will be posted against a document type so let's suppose this is gl to gl entry that is called jv general voucher this we are going to post against a document type sa so whenever you post a transaction against a document type what will happen then system has to generate a document number so what system is going to search that this transaction is posted against which document type system came to know that this is getting posted against sa okay now then system is going to find out what is the number range has been linked against sa document type system found it is 01 now against 01 which series we have given so from here also we can reach over there click on number range inter, uh, interval from there also we can reach directly on this screen so and then click on any interval so system found against 01 we have given 1000 2999 okay so now what will happen system is going to generate and here in our status in our status means number range status okay system found here zero here zero means what will happen nothing there is no any posting against this document type this is a fresh number range so what will happen system is going to take the first one it means system is going to generate the first document number that is 1000 that is 1000 so the first document number will be generated and the first document number will be 1000 once you post once you post a document once you save a document once you save a transaction then system is going to generate a number range how system is going to generate a number range because system has checked the document type against that document type uh, which number range we have given that system is going to check and against that number range what is the exact range here we have given system found it is 1000 to 1 triple line now here in nr status it is zero so system is going to generate the first number system is going to take the first number which is 1000 so the document number generated here at the end document number generated 1000 and what will happen here automatically 1000 will be updated okay 1000 will be updated here automatically and how it will look like i'll just let you know here it will be 1000 will be generated and automatically here system is going to update 1000 number range number range will be updated here nr status will be updated 1000 the first document got posted system generated a number range that is the uh, document number that is 1000 and automatically system is going to update here in nr status field 1000 will be updated now if you post the next document once again the same thing is going to be checked by system here also system will check against which document type we are going to post the transaction okay system found sa now against sa in background system is going to check against sa which number range is there system found it is 01 then again in again in background itself system is going to check against 01 what is the number range so system found 1000 to 1000 triple line so number must be there in between 1000 to 1000 triple line itself but what should be the next number system also found the number and status is 1000 it means we have posted one document that is 1000 so what should be the next document number so 1000 plus 1 so system is going to generate the next number range that is 1001 and here automatically once again the nr status is going to be changed 1001 so on this logic system is going to generate the number range and based on this logic one by one one by one our number range is being consumed
okay based on this logic a number range is being consumed there is one more box here called external if you apply a check mark on external box if you apply a check mark here then what will happen then system is not going to derive document number automatically what we'll have to do we have to give document number manually okay system is not going to derive document number automatically we have to give this document number while posting a document type if you click on external it means you have to decide the document number manually but most likely in almost most of the documents whenever most of the transactions are going to be posted internally itself internally means sap is going to derive the number range because it's impossible for us to maintain the sequence okay the sequence uh, today we have posted certain, trans certain transactions again tomorrow if you are going to post some transaction how you will remind that which sequence what was the last document yesterday right so most likely in most of the transactions we are going to use this internal number range itself we are not going to apply a check mark here but this is the use of external checkbox so that maybe during interview if somebody asks like if you what is the impact if you apply a check mark on external box in document number range so you have to say like if we apply a check mark on external box then what will happen sap is not going to sap is not going to derive the document number automatically while posting a document while posting a transactions we have to decide the document number ourselves in the sense user is going to decide the document number ourselves manually you have to give the document number so these all things are a matter of practical also once we post a document practically then you will be having a better understanding but right now we are not having still we are having certain settings which we have to do and then only we will be able to post the transactions so here i am trying to make you guys understand about the document type okay so here three major things are there in document types first first is the document type determines the types of transactions that i, I have explained it controls the document number range i also i also explain you guys how it's going to control the document number range it is zero one here okay now and field status as well field status what is called field status guys field status means whenever you post a document whenever you post a document let's suppose we are going to use slash n f-02 this is a uh, let's suppose is a transaction code which we use for posting a transaction or fb50 is also there anything so while post posting a document we have to give lots of details here document date posting date document type company code currency now these things will come later i'm just telling you so what how document types so this is called different different fields are there okay so out of these all things here we are having two field referent and doc, reference number and document header text okay <clears throat> so these fields right now these fields are non mandatory in the sense it is optional whether you fill up something here or not it doesn't matter okay whether you fill up something here or not it doesn't matter okay so now <clears throat> what will happen if somebody says that i want to make these two field mandatory in the sense while posting a transaction we must have to enter certain details here so if you want to make these field mandatory how we are going to make this field mandatory see the document type sa automatically it's coming here now you double click on document type sa by using transaction code oba7 and then at bottom we are having required during document entry so we have to apply a check mark here once you apply the check mark here reference and header text and once you save then what will happen once you save this then what will happen these two fields become mandatory and if you don't fill up the details system is going to throw an error okay so now guys i'm not going to explain too much about these things because it will be kind of you know confusion going will be uh, creating some kind of confusions once we post a document then i'll show you guys how we are going to make it mandatory so that you will be having a better understanding theoretically i have just explained practically i cannot explain because we are not having any gl to post a document 
we must have a GL to post a document. In order to set up a GL, in order to create a GL, first of all, we have to do basic settings for GL, which will be started. That is going to be started from next session onwards, next class onwards. Okay. So that's what theoretically itself I'm explaining this. So these are the three things which will be controlled by document type, which you must have to explain during interview. If somebody is asking, uh, what, do you mean, what do you mean by document type and what does it control? So you have to say document type determines the types of transactions. It means it is going to determine the types of transaction, whether the post transaction which we have posted is invoice or credit memo or payment or any different kind of transactions. Apart from this, it controls the number range, document number range. And apart from this, it also controls the field status. In field status, what does it control? It controls only two fields, document header text and reference field. Remaining fields will be controlled by what? Remaining fields will be controlled by field status variant or so-called field status group, which I taught you guys yesterday. Okay, so don't be confused. Okay, once we start our practical session, everything is going to be cleared. Okay, and once you guys start your practical, then it is going to clarify all those things. But anyway, so this is all about document types. Okay, this is all about document types. Now, there are a few more things, this uh, reversal document types and all. So once I post the document documents and once, uh, you know, I have to show you guys how to reverse the documents and all, at that point of time, we are going to use these all things. There are some more things like exchange rate types and all. So once I start, uh, you know, foreign currency settings and all. So there I'll cover. Okay. So till now, this much only about the document types, whatever I have explained, it's more than enough for you guys to know. Now we have to see the next topic and the next topic is very important. The next topic called posting key. Next topic is posting key. So what is the use of posting key that also I explain. Now the next topic is what is what is called posting key. Uh, sorry, uh, next topic is posting key. So here the first question is what is called posting key. So guys posting key generally what is posting key. Posting key decide the debit and credit side of transaction. Okay. As I said, as I said, here in SAP, whenever you post any transaction, let's suppose one GL is getting debited, other GL is getting credited. So now in SAP, what is happening if you have to debit or credit the transaction? Then it's not like that we are going to give debit credit. Of course, this option is also there, but most likely what is happening? Instead of debit credit system, what system going to use? System is going to use certain different key that is called posting key. Instead of debit credit, if it is GL to GL entry, then we are going to use instead of debit 40 will be there and instead of credit 50 will be there. Okay, so what will happen since you guys are using first time like those who is seeing this first time, they will be a bit confused. Are are what is this 40? What is this 50? But once you repeat the practice once or twice or thrice you will come to know 40 equals to debit 50 equals to credit for gl okay likewise we are having other transactions also we are having customer related transactions so in that 0 1 equals to debit and 15 equals to credit vendor 25 debit and 31 credit if you remind this three uh, it's it's more than enough apart from this we are having others also but now here I'll explain what is the use of posting key. So posting key define, decide the debit and credit side of transaction. So what is this debit credit side of transactions? Instead of debit, we are going to use 40. Instead of credit, we are going to use 50 for GL. Okay. Now, the second thing, it also controls the field status of a transaction or document. Now guys, this is very much confusing here why because i said field status is controlled by field status variant like whenever you post any transaction 
whenever you post any transactions transactions let's suppose we are having this uh, you know uh, lots of fields will appear while posting a transactions and those fields are going to be controlled by field status variant okay i'll show you guys we are having field status variant ob c4 by ob c4 we create field status variant okay if you use transaction code obc4 <coughs> so this is our field status variant tm10 which we have created double click on field status field status group and double click on any group so this is how system is going to control like in general data we are having assignment number that is optional text field this is optional okay so how it is going to now here so this is going to control the fields which appears during transaction posting field status variant but now i said one more i have created one more confusion i am saying that this posting key also controls the field status variant in the sense this sorry the posting key is also going to control the field status of a document it means this is also going to control the fields which appears during transaction posting how it's going to control so if you see about posting key how to create posting key okay guys document type i have not created why because we are going to use standard document type itself till now whatever document types have been given by sap it's more than enough if you have to create a new document type then what we are going to do we are not going to create a new one okay i think some problem was there in audio connection so i'll repeat once again what i was saying that a document type uh, is already whatever required document types are there that is given by sap so we are not going to create a new one but whenever you have to like let's suppose in real time if you are having a requirement to create a document type then we are not going to create a new one we have to use the doc document type one document type as a reference like here sa we are going to use as a reference and we can copy and then you can give a different document type whatever the requirement is raised by client like it is whether it is za give za and then you need to press enter and then we can save it okay so this is how generally we create i shown you guys here it's it's pretty easy once you understand about something like what is the major importance of these things and all then creation is very easy guys nothing is there in the creation simply we have copied and whatever the client is saying like instead of sa i am planning to use a different document type za so you just copy sa and give a different document type za your document this code we are going to change and then you can save it okay now <coughs> here we are discussing about posting key so how to create a posting key posting key we are going to create create a new session here posting key can be created by using transaction code ob41 i guess let me try ob41 is the transaction code for posting key okay so posting key also posting key whatever the required posting keys are there that is already given by sap here posting key also we are not going to set up a new posting key but we need to understand how this posting key what posting key is going to control so posting key i said like first thing it is going to determine the debit and credit side of the transaction so see here there are lots of posting keys some debit 
and even credit also okay for vendor for customer for gl okay for assets every transactions for every transaction different different posting keys are there you are not going to use all these posting key few posting key we have to use and as i said like in several modules several kind of transactions are there so of course those people also require this posting keys and all now i have to explain one more things which is very important that posting key is also going to control the field status in the sense the fields which appears during transaction posting how it is going to control let's suppose i double click on posting key 40 so here it is going to decide whether it is debit or credit it is also going to de define decide the account type and it feels like whether we are going to use this posting key against gl or customer or vendor okay now here what will happen the major important things which you have to see click on vendor field status see here also we are having all those things whatever settings we had at here in field status group we are here in field status group so i double click on field status group see the same details are there here in field status group and same details are here in posting key also it means whatever we are going to control by field status group see here in general data whatever fields are there in general data and whatever things are being controlled by field status group or field status variant the same thing will be controlled by even posting key also see the same thing is being controlled by posting key also now the problem is then what is the difference isn't it why sap has given two places why sap has given same setting at two places okay one side i am saying saying that the field which is whatever fields appear during transaction uh, posting that is being controlled by field status variant or so called field status group other side i am saying that whatever the fields which is appearing during transaction posting that can be controlled by posting key as well so what is the difference guys i'll tell you the difference is if you give certain things if you are going to apply a setting here at field status variant level that setting is going to be applicable yes so if you are going to apply setting at field status group level that setting is applicable at company code level and whenever you give any setting at posting key level that is applicable at client level now what is the difference between client and company code guys i'll tell you see whenever you log in in sap whenever you double click on this whenever you log in in sap then the very first we are having a client number here client level means under this 800 we are having several company code once you go inside we are having several company code so it means whatever if you are going to apply a setting here at posting key level i said this settings are applicable at client level client level means inside of that 800 client whatever company codes are there every company code is going to impact every company code will have impact with this setting if i say general data in general data let's suppose assignment number is required entry it means what will happen this setting is going to be impacted this setting is going to apply it at client level it means all company code is going to be affected okay but here if you made assignment number mandatory by using your field status variant in that we are having group so if you make this mandatory this is going to this setting is applicable for your company code itself why because this field status variant you have assigned to your company code only this field status variant is not being used by other company code okay so if there is any requirement let's suppose we are having a requirement and people says that make this assignment number mandatory if your client says that make this assignment number mandatory and this should be mandatory for all of our company code like tata motor tata steel tata uh, tcs tata hotel group let's suppose lots of company codes are there for data group 
if this is that this should be this setting should be applicable for all company code we can apply this setting at posting key level client level or else if the requirement is for a particular company code tata moto then what we are going to do we are going to apply this setting at field status variant level so this is the difference guys i know that everybody is are not able to understand right now but i have explained this why because in future also you are going to watch this video and once you have the once we are going to start the practical session there i'll show you guys or else you can also make the experiment if you came to know about this if i have explained this you can also make the experiment and that is going to make it easy once you see the practically and all then you will be able to understand okay so this is why i have explained right now theoretically itself so that practically also you can make the experiment and later on once again there will be explanations about uh, this client level setting and company code level setting what is the difference so that's what i'm not going into much detail because i know uh, those who is doing this first time for them it is going to create bit confusion and all so this is the major difference so field status can be controlled by field status variant also and the same field status of a document is being controlled by posting key also i shown you guys what is the difference if you apply any setting at posting key level posting key level then it is going to be applied at client client level if you apply any setting at uh, field status variant level that setting is applicable at company code level itself why because field status variant when when you create a field status variant this field status variant is going to link to your company code it means this field status variant we are going to assign to the company code but guys posting key we are not going to link with any company code it means posting key is is a kind of setting which is available at client level now i am not going to explain too much once again about this uh, difference between company code and client level once again there will be explanation about this somewhere so that at that point of time you will be having better understanding so this is all about posting key now what is document type i have explained posting key i have explained and number range is already okay number range is already created this basic accounting it's not required because you all you all knows accounting and all basic accounting uh, entries and all anyway so uh, till uh, this much only we are having in this uh, basic setting guys nothing is so we'll close this session here itself and tomorrow onwards we are going to start a gl setting which is going to be much interesting and uh, we are having lots of things to discuss while gl setting also that is going to make you people unique compared to other places because as i said everywhere lots of people are giving training and they are providing you know lots of things to their candidates so how you are going to be unique you are going to be unique if you have the training at this level so whatever i have taught just watch my videos after this session i'll convert this video i'm going to share with you guys okay watch it and try to prepare a notebook and as i said at the end of uh, once i cover all the topics and all then i'll share you interview questions and all uh, answers everything i have you know prepared that also i'll share but first of all whatever i am teaching you just follow these all things you just go through these all things because if you mug up the interview question and answer it's easy to get a placement but how you are going to survive in real time isn't it once you get the placement how you are going to survive so whatever things i have taught right now that is going to save you once you get the placement so don't very much concentrate on the interview question and answer because if you are having understanding right now or if you do some hard work if you do the practice then whatever questions and answers i share in that you need to go through the questions only answers automatically you will be given yourself because you are having the understanding of the topics so thank you guys from tomorrow onwards we'll start the next session that is gl set gl settings and all so in this session only this much will be there okay there is a question there is a question when we define 1000 till 999 1999 one, 
what happened when the 20, 28th like 2000s document get posted so i told you dear if you are able to remind i already told you that since we are doing a practice that is what itself i said 1000 to 1000 to 1999 but if you talk about real time see here we have given 01 number range 1000 to 1999 here your company code i have given a small number range here right but as i said in real time it's not like that in real time we are having like this okay in real time we are having like this this is your number range now this is it's it's not going to be finished at all it is impossible okay see the number see the length of this number so that is impossible so in real time the scenario itself will never come okay so this this scenario is not possible okay and if 2000 is going to let's suppose if it happens then what will happen then we have to create one other number range you give your 0 to and then give start from 2000 to 2999 like that okay but generally it never happens so i explained there itself that in real time what we are going to give real time we are going to give a very huge range so that it will not be finished a number range is going to be created every year every year you need to create a new number range. see here we have created 2017 right and already we are in uh, this uh, november month so in next month anyway the batches is going to run so you all are you all people have to create a new number range in january so you are very lucky this also you can make experiment very next month after one month itself you have to change the number range in the sense you need to change the you have to create number range once once again because this we have created for 2017 so once you entered on the once a system is going to once it become first january what will happen system is going to but system is going to throw an error message that this range got expired why because we entered in 2018 but for that you need to use a different fiscal year variant guys because if you use april to march then what will happen our new year is going to start from uh, 2018 april onwards if you use k4 that is jan to december then only system is going to consider okay january onwards we are going to enter into new year so system will say that now this number range expired you need to create a new number range see guys whatever posting key i said like debit equals to 40 for gl and credit equals to 50 for gl so even the same posting key will be there in real time also so posting key uh, whatever posting key has been given by sap that is more than enough okay if there is any requirement to define a new posting key also we can define okay ob41 OB is itself is the transaction code by which uh, we can select a posting key you can copy you can create as a reference you can create new anything can be done but generally it's not required because whatever posting key has been given by SAP, that is more than enough. In terms of document type, yes, you can create a new document types. How to create that also I have shown you guys. Okay. Okay, guys. So if no further question, then we'll close this session here itself. So see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.